Well, this week was just full of surprises. NFL Week 16, it's like you get the magic hat and a rabbit pops out because just so <laughs> many things went adverse to the way I thought they would go. But I guess, you know, that's a good thing. It should be surprising, keep you on your toes and all of that. But not great in terms of my picks and bets, but we'll get into that. How are you feeling today? Dude, it was just magic beyond what the sorcerers were capable of. I mean, it's that Christmas magic. It has you know to what be. I mean, the Christmas miracles for a lot of teams this week, I would say. Dude, it has to be. Remember, we were talking about last week that Las Vegas was going to have to pull off some sort of Christmas miracle like did. a Horton Hairs a Who. <laughs> he, and they, they did, did, bro. Horton delivered. He heard the Who. <laughs> I just, I can't believe that game. There's a whole bunch of games where just inexplicable things happen. Yeah. But yes, we'll get into that. Starting off with the thumbnail stats, just shaking up across the board. The, the corner streak QB. is broken, dude. I, can't I told it. you it I was going to happen. Tua I mean, came in clutch. Yeah, I can't believe it. that was a close game for sure. But you know they had that game-winning field goal drive, yeah. and they it couldn't really do it against Tennessee. So they did here. Yeah, no, it really wasn't Tua by any means. I mean, it was just their kicker just going nuts the whole my game. God, I yeah. know, man. I wish I had Jason Sanders on my team because he wasn't. <laughs> he didn't hurt himself like my Dustin Hopkins did. Yeah, it feels like kind of, I don't know, just weird for the corner QB streak to end on a game where Tua actually didn't really do a whole lot. No, I mean, just he their threw kicker. for a ton of yards. He didn't turn over the ball. So, I mean, he did fine. Yeah, he, he was fine, well. but, like, he won touchdown. In a game like that, though, like, that's the game you got to play. Yeah, Dak had the fair. fumble on the goal line, and that's what cost yeah. them the game. But yeah, the left and right QB just kind of going back and forth, nine and seven for left QB, right QB, seven and nine. Jake went 10 and six this week, bringing his total to 144 and 96. I went eight and eight, bringing mine to 148 and 92. Starting with Thursday night football, a pretty good game. New Orleans came back and made it a little interesting, but they just couldn't dig themselves out of the huge hole they were in. The Rams kind of even. reminiscent of the Lions game, the Lions, uh, yeah. the Lions uh, Saints I game agree. a couple of weeks back, you know, just like the Rams, like really were taking control early, mm-hmm. and then New Orleans just crawling their way yeah, back into it. Yeah, it's like New Orleans, if they could put a full game together, they could actually be pretty mm-hmm. good, you know. I right. mean, the Rams even missed a field goal in this one, so they could have been up by more. Cooper Cut seemed to get a little bit banged up, and then he was still out there, but he didn't seem like himself, and right. it was just Puka's game, anyways. But yeah, the Rams look really good. Dangerous team. I think they're a lock to make the sixth seed and mm-hmm. maybe play the Lions, which would be pretty cool. Pretty crazy. Yeah, that would be a saucy little playoff uh, game. But, yeah, Puka just absolutely dominated in this game. And he had his best game of the season, um, at least in terms of fantasy relevance. And, honestly, he just balled out, you know, way better than Cooper Cup. I know both of us were hoping yeah. for Cup to have, I think, a 35-point week is what we said last week. That would have helped, yeah. Yeah, no, he did not. He put up, like, 7.9 points in a half PPR league. 10.9 Kinda, in the full. Yeah, just kind of a poor performance out of him. Um, Chris Olave had a very solid week, though. He was getting a lot of yardage racked up. Yeah, he had a good week. One yeah. of his best weeks, even without a touchdown, I yeah. don't think. Light week out of Kamara, though. Um, not a whole lot to be said for any other yeah. Saints players, I don't think. I mean, Derek Carr, if he doesn't throw that in the reception, they could be in the game. Because Derek Carr played pretty good. Two yeah. games in a row now with three passing touchdowns. Mm-hmm. And those were his only two games with three passing touchdowns of the entire year. So it seems like he's heating up a little bit. I think he's unfairly criticized at times. But moving on to the Saturday game, you know, I want you to take this one, Mr. <laughs> Jake Browning over dude, here. <laughs> dude, I definitely will. I talked way too highly of Jake Browning. I mean, Browning I will say week. he didn't play like horrible though. I mean, he had some turnovers for sure, but he still threw for a bunch of yards and kept them semi within the game, I guess. But Mason Rudolph, dude, I saw that, you know, I sent you that meme. Because I just watched Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer and when <laughs> Santa's like, Rudolph, will you guide our slate tonight? I mean, that's exactly what happened because <laughs> that's exactly what Mason Rudolph did. He played probably his best career game. I really should have like gotten on the sleigh and uh, you know really embraced the Christmas symbolism I mean, and foreshadowing you're of starting Mason Q- Rudolph. He is Rudolph. You, How can yeah. you bet against him? Yeah, exactly. It was funny because I originally bet on Cincinnati right before the game Saturday morning. Then I listened to a little podcast and they were like, Steelers to play. I cashed out on the Steelers. No way. Usually I don't get swayed by listening to podcasts like that, but they presented a good argument. Mm-hmm. And I was like, yep, you're right. You know, this is, I mean, Cincinnati's now 0-5 in the division, mm-hmm. whereas Pittsburgh is 4-1 and in the division. That's crazy. So it's just you're going up against, you got two teams 
with stark differences in that department. Mm -hmm. And I mean, Jake Browning, like I said, he still played okay, but it was bound to come to a close at one point. Yeah, I was surprised. It was almost, uh, you know, a little reminiscent of Josh Dobbs' little couple game stretch I mean, yeah. of glory, all and these then he just fell. All these backup quarterbacks, yeah. except for Gardner Minshew, he's been a little bit just more up and down mm-hmm. versus up and then super down. But yeah, Pittsburgh took care of business, and they still could be alive for the playoff spot. Mm-hmm. Cincinnati, not as much. I think both teams will miss the playoffs, but I guess they both do have some life. Buffalo at Chargers. I cannot believe this game was as close as it was. Another game where the kicker just took over. I think Mm -hmm. he had five field goals and only one touchdown in this game. And Bills win on a last-second field goal in which they were able to run the clock down. Yeah, I mean, Easton Stick, again, like not that bad. (laughs) Yeah, he was a little bit better than I was expecting him to be. Um, Yeah, it really seemed like the Chargers were, in fact, revitalized by... Yeah, they Brandon were. Staley firing. We talked last week yeah. that we didn't think that they would I mean, that be. That just and, is what happens. But, yeah. I mean, the Bills at least were able to survive it because that would have been right. bad. You can't lose to the Chargers. No, absolutely not. After they you know, lose by 43, you definitely can't lose to them. But I'm glad that Buffalo still clutched up and they're still – you know, very strongly in the playoff race. Yep. They're Most, the sixth seed now. And yeah, if good. Miami loses to Baltimore this weekend, then, and assuming the Bills take care of business against New England, then their game, week 18, will decide the division. Mm-hmm. Although I really don't think it matters all that much because neither team will get the first round by at this point. Right. Yeah. Unless the Ravens Just somehow majestically lead, yeah. you know, lose the last two games. So, I mean, I just, I really do think that Mm-hmm. I think Miami would play maybe Buffalo if they win the division and then vice versa. Or actually it would probably be a little bit different if Buffalo won because then Miami would be a better wild card over Cleveland. So then yeah. Cleveland would fall to the sixth seed mm-hmm. and then Miami would then play Jacksonville or Houston, whoever wins the South. But we'll get into some playoff situations later. Moving on here, Washington at Jets. Washington was down 28 to nothing at one point or something along those lines and fought their way back still ended up losing i just can't get over Mm -hmm. how bad sam hollow has been the last few weeks when he was really cooking against some good teams earlier in the year i know yeah it was just atrocious um i think it was 20 to 0 is what it was and then washington scored and then the Mm -hmm. jets went up 27 to 7 yeah then washington made a crazy comeback 28 27 yeah um, and then they still end up losing but yeah i mean sam Howell, you know I think he started having his turnaround of into sloppy ball when I put him in the <laughs> fantasy start for the week. Oh, yeah. And after that, he just became a bench warmer. I just can't believe it. I mean, clearly they're fine offensively because Jacoby Brissett comes in now yeah. both games and plays pretty well. I'm honestly surprised that – I mean, I guess at this point it doesn't matter for them. They probably want to lose the right. rest of the games to improve yeah. their draft capital. But – in terms of the best QB on their team right now, it is not Sam Howell, it's Jacoby Brissett. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I agree with that. I think that they're probably going to have him. There's their weekly starter moving forward. I'm surprised they even had Howell start this week. Well, that's what I'm saying. See, I feel like they might be doing that so that they can lose the games and get better <laughs> draft capital. Yeah, but that's true. That's neither here nor there. But, I mean, good for Trevor Simeon. Brees Hall in an absolute monster game. Mm-hmm. Wasn't enough to keep me alive in the guillotine league. My Very head was my head was man. chopped off today. I'm sorry, dude. It was I feel it was bad. tough opening the app and seeing my team just completely depleted. Oh, <laughs> that's so sad, dude. You know your team just had a little fire sale on the really the waiver dude. wire I mean, for those last two. It's crazy. Guys. Like sleeper projections was really the enemy of the weekend because according to the other like my regular league, it said I was like 78 percent chance of winning. Yeah, ended up losing by like 40 points. Wow. And then in this one, it said I was projected like 158, ended up finishing at like 140. Oh my Bro. god, Devonte <laughs> Adams and Jalen Waddle can really they go. They stroke too. Yeah, Detroit at Minnesota here, another pretty good game. Minnesota had the lead for a couple possessions. But Detroit fought their way back, and when Nick Mullins throws four picks, that's what's going to happen. However. He still played pretty well. Threw for 411 yards. He was thrown for over 10 yards a shot. And I knew he kind of would. I mean, this guy is a gunslinger. Mm -hmm. Actually, in our fantasy league, I finally set my dad's roster because he's been just so aloof and not saying his (laughs) roster. And I was like, bench Geno Smith. Let's pick up Nick Mullins. And that ended up being a good decision, even though Mullins had the four picks. But yeah, pretty good game. Just a wild stat line. Like, who... 
tosses over 400 yards, <laughs> but then four picks. Bro. I mean, they were just throwing I mean, the ball all over the yard. Yeah, it was crazy. Just a wild week for the Vikings all around, though. I mean, Jordan Addison comes out of the game. TJ Hawkinson comes out of the done game. Done for the season. TJ's done for the season? Yeah. Oh, no way. Done. Oh, yeah. I didn't even know mm-hmm. that yet. Oh, that must have just been come out today. Yeah, I saw oh, it a couple wow. hours ago. Was it like a MRI on his knee? Like, what happened? I'm not sure. I didn't look that into it. I just saw that he was wow. out for the whole season. So, Dang. I mean, that's tough for the Vikings, but yeah, they weren't going to do anything anyways. Yeah, I know. That's for sure. Um, What else was I going to say? Oh, and then Justin Jefferson was even just quiet in the first half, and then yeah. Nick Mullins starts throwing him the ball, <laughs> like, and, you yeah, know, start making halfway plays. through the second quarter, and he realizes yeah, he's that. he's just such a star. Yeah, exactly. I don't know why he didn't get it to him sooner. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, I think they were trying to guard them a little bit more, and so Jordan Aston, once Jordan Aston's out of the game, then you kind of yeah. have to just go to Jefferson. Mm-hmm. Cleveland at Houston, though, now this line did – flip because it was confirmed like right after we uploaded that cj stroud was out Mm -hmm. and so joe flacco just absolutely annihilated them with amari cooper davis mills comes in for the bench case keenum plays a little bit better and they put some points up on the board but yeah man cleveland looks really good joe flacco he had a couple picks in this game the first Mm -hmm. one wasn't really much of a worry because their kicker obviously got hurt on the kickoff return. And so they were going for like every fourth down. So it was actually beneficial that he threw the interception instead of it getting swatted down. So Mm -hmm. his stat line is a little misleading if you look at the interceptions, but I mean, he had a phenomenal game, like three passing touchdowns and a ton of yards. So yeah, good pick. Crazy. Good pick here, bro. I mean, I really thought that honestly, I thought CJ was going to play, but even if he didn't, I thought that Houston still stood a good chance after um, you know, they had they had beat Tennessee yeah. the week before. Like I just yeah, thought no. that they were still gonna be able to pull off a win here. Yeah, it's just it's tough with the backup quarterback. Yeah. I don't know why they were starting Case Keenum over Davis Mills mm-hmm. anyways. I think that was kind of a boneheaded decision. Right. I think if they started him against Tennessee last week, they would have won easily and maybe this week they could have mm-hmm. kept it a little closer. But yeah. yeah, that's crazy. I can't believe Dustin Hopkins went out. That pissed me off to the high heavens, even though it ended up not mattering. But it was one of the pieces in my absolute <laughs> horrendous, horrific fantasy week. Yeah, I'm sorry that you had such a rough week there. Amari Cooper happened to save me in my fantasy league, which is very, very exciting. Um, you know, I had him on my team. He tosses up 46 points. This and, must have been your other league because I know in the other other yeah, league in, you were going up against Amari. Correct. Yeah, <laughs> in my regular league, uh, I was saved from punishment by Amari Cooper, mm. um, but I was facing him in my high rollers league, which does suck because oh, I lost hey, there. I mean, you take what you can get, you know. Take yeah. And give. Yeah, yeah for sure. Care. But good for Amari. I mean, he sets for the real. single uh, game record for a Browns receiver. It was previously held by Josh Gordon with 261, and Amari puts up 265. I think it was 11 catches and yep. two touchdowns. And he Crazy. he could have had two more touchdowns. He was tackled um, on his like 70 yard catch or whatever. He was tackled at the yeah. five yard line. I know he was close. He was knocking on the door. Like I Houston know. had no answer for Amari. Right, and then another time too, he was tackled on the one and didn't get a touchdown so like he could have feasibly had like another 12 fantasy points for like a 58 point day which would have just been crazy it was nuts i just can't believe i thought houston's defense was a little bit better than that but they just had no answer for him yeah green bay had no answer for carolina and bryce young bryce young having his best game as Mm -hmm. a starter as a professional quarterback green bay should be extremely lucky that they scraped out a win they should be because bryce young (laughs) was unable to get the spike off at the end of the mm-hmm. game. And that so was they crazy. Couldn't get the field goal, which, I mean, that's not... It's like, just a if fraction you're the Panthers, of a second, bro. If you're the Panthers, like, you got to make sure that happens. But yeah. I feel like they don't even think they're ever going to be in those situations, so they don't practice right. them. But I just don't understand. 25 seconds left. The Panthers have no timeouts, and they give up two completions back-to-back of 20-plus yards and immediately puts the Carolina Panthers Mm -hmm. in the field goal range. And the Panthers were just moving up and down the field. I mean, they were in third and long constantly. And as somebody who had Green Bay's defense on their fantasy team, I was watching this game quite closely. Third and nine, no problem for Bryce Young. I mean, he played really well in this game, I will say. But I should have known better after Tampa Bay torched Green Bay, after the Giants torched Green Bay. They've been really struggling on defense, and they need to get rid of that offensive coordinator so yeah mm-hmm. they squawk they squawk by they squeaked by <laughs> but yeah i just oh yeah not that, good not good if you're the packers you're pretty much out of playoff contention mm-hmm. i would say you'd have to get pretty lucky now with the rams and seattle 
winning their last couple games. Yeah, I agree. And, you know, Green Bay was the the defensive pickup of the week for most people in fantasy. You know, you're thinking that they're facing Carolina. This is going to be like the one of the best defenses to start this week. And they really let people down. Pin my stomach before the game yeah. based on that performance against Tampa. I mm-hmm. mean, I don't think Carolina put up more than 21 points in the game. I think they put up 21 against the Dolphins earlier. Yeah. And that was pretty much it. Mm-hmm. So pretty poor all around there. Yep. Seattle at Tennessee. Tennessee led for actually most of this game under Ryan Tannehill's leadership, but they just couldn't get it done in the end. Seattle was able to pull away with it, and yeah, good for them. I think they're definitely playing for more than Tennessee is, so Mm -hmm. Tennessee could easily lose and helps their draft stock, so I don't think it's that big of a deal. Yeah, a little back-to-back weeks where Seattle wins just at the very end of the game. Yeah, I mean, good for them. Geno Smith is back. He played pretty good, I would say. So, Mm -hmm. hey, I mean, they got two good quarterbacks. I mean, have to be happy if you, you know, have – that kind of backup quarterback situation, because as we've seen this year with a lot of backup quarterbacks, I mean, they will play. Almost half the league has needed a backup quarterback. And right. It depends on, you know, how good they are, whether or not you could remain in playoff contention or not. Like the Colts, yeah. their backup quarterback's good enough. It doesn't seem like the Vikings' backup quarterbacks mm-hmm. were really good enough for them. And same thing could be said about, you know, the Chargers, but I guess even before that happened, they weren't even in it. But, I mean, it's just kind of crazy. So backup quarterback is such a vital position now, it seems. And yeah. A lot of these teams just kind of disregard it. Like, mm-hmm. I bet if we got to uncovering some of these other ones, you'd probably find that they aren't so good either. Like, who's the backup quarterback behind Josh Allen? I think it's Kyle Allen. and I mean, he's certainly <laughs> not very good. And backup yeah. quarterback behind Mahomes. God, I don't even know. Is it still Chad Henney? Dude, I, Might have, be. I have absolutely no idea. <laughs> so Hopefully we don't have to see any more of that, but it's just been crazy for the backup quarterbacks this year. It seems like Derrick Henry uh, could be the backup quarterback <laughs> for Tennessee, yeah, no, bro. Yeah, he had a, what, 12-yard passing touchdown. Yeah, that's the second crazy. one this year. Yeah, I know. They have that play. They bring that play out every once in a while. I remember they ran it in the playoffs in yeah. 2020 against Baltimore. So, yeah, good for Derrick Henry. I mean, he's always the guy that gets the throw mm-hmm. it as well. Yeah. And it's wild because he's like a shorter guy. He always like does his little jump pass. Yeah. It's so cute. Mm-hmm. But anyways, Indianapolis at Atlanta. I was kind of surprised about this, but as the week moved, like I just another one where I felt in my stomach that Atlanta would win. I think Indianapolis opened as favorites, and then Atlanta became the favorite, and that just always spooks me out. And yeah, sure enough, I think it was actually because they benched Desmond Ritter, and yeah, Taylor Heineke actually played pretty well, and I always thought he was better than Desmond Ritter, so I don't know why they didn't make this move sooner, but. Yeah, I mean, good for Atlanta. I would have preferred to see Indianapolis win, and they just had a tough game on offense. I mean, at the beginning, they both went down each other's fields and scored touchdowns, mm-hmm. but after that, it was all Falcons. Yeah, Indianapolis was really quiet after that. So are the Falcons just like kind of vacillating back and forth between Ritter and Heineke? Like, I know that Ritter was out yeah. with like a concussion, but then like Heineke came in. And then they started Desmond the next week, and then they, Heineke I mean, went back it's in. It's just goofy to me because Taylor Heineke never did anything to get himself benched. He hurt his hamstring, yeah. and then they just snuck Desmond Ritter back in. Desmond Ritter then plays bad against yeah, the Panthers wacky. and loses that game, and now they put Taylor Heineke in. So, I mean, Desmond Ritter's not the answer there. I mean, Taylor isn't either, but he is much better than Desmond. Mm-hmm. So it just really mind boggles me because they could have obviously won their division this year. And I think they right. lost a couple games that they could have easily won. And mm-hmm. that was the difference. Yeah. Jacksonville at Tampa Bay. See, this is where the league, like up until now, I was like, all right, like I can understand all that happening. But man, this is one game where I just, I can't believe it went the way it did. Jacksonville has looked horrible the last few weeks, and I am just absolutely mind boggled about their performance. I mean, Mm -hmm. I don't know. Trevor Lawrence might be playing hurt because he is throwing interceptions and he's fumbling. You know, in fact, my two fantasy quarterbacks in my two quarterback league combined for a total seven turnovers. So that was (laughs) wonderful. (laughs) Four picks from Brock Purdy, two picks from Trevor, and a fumble. So that was much appreciated. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I mean, I can't believe they struggled to get so much going offensively and the under hit by a point, which I bet the over on. So yeah. just a tough game overall for me. But I mean, Baker Mayfield has just been cooking. He's been playing like one of the best quarterbacks in the league over the last three, four weeks. Probably and the comeback player of the year. Could be. Yeah, it could be him. Honestly, I'm trying to think of somebody else who could be a contender for that. Yeah. 
And it's hard to say. Honestly, though, Joe Flacco, maybe. No, dude, that could be it, too, especially if he carries them uh, Yeah, you know, through the playoffs. Yeah, here. we'll see how he finishes off the year and how Baker finishes off the year because mm-hmm. both of them could end up in the playoffs. Right. Tua, maybe as well, because he had the concussion, got yeah. hurt. His so, feels like less of a comeback yeah, story, though, because like, Baker has definitely had a down Baker, year. Yeah. But Dolphins were still solid last year. Joe Flacco had, I mean, he is definitely the biggest yeah. comeback because he's been basically out of the league for a few That's true. years, and now he gets to play on a playoff team. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, good stuff all around for Baker. Like, I'm a Bucks fan for sure, don't mm-hmm. get me wrong. I just really did not think that they would be able to pull this one out. But, hey, I mean... They're looking dangerous right now, and they're going to be in the playoffs most likely as long as they don't screw it up. So yep. maybe they can make some noise. Dude, that'd be exciting. Any thoughts on that one? Or? That I don't have a, a whole lot to you. say. Yeah, I'm glad. I'm I'm a little surprised that you know, you're know you 95% betting on Tampa yeah, Bay. Yeah, it certainly probably, went down because yeah. I also you know missed on the over on this game by one point. It was 43, and... Ended up at 42 points. I just can't believe that Jacksonville didn't put more points up on the board. They missed the field goal. Yeah. Their field goal kicker has gone the shit. He's no, for missed. Sure. I think he's like under 50% the last couple of games because mm-hmm. he missed two kicks against the Ravens. So yeah, that's it's just wacky. Been, it's been tough. I mean, they've lost four in a row now. Mm-hmm. They were eight and three battling for the number one seed and now Not they're even eight close. and seven <laughs> and i just man trevor lawrence he should have probably taken a game off oh he's definitely playing with an injury though I, they're talking yeah. that he might not even play this coming week because he got yoinked at the end of this game because of his injury yeah no he did and cj bethard played pretty well so yeah. what they should have done is sam against cleveland mm-hmm. let cj bethard play that but i think cj bethard was also hurt going into that game so yeah. they just have a little bit of a rough situation going on but right. they have an easy remaining two games carolina and tennessee so you know i'm I mean, sure they'll be able to too. yeah i'm sure they'll be able to take too. care of business but yeah trevor has not been playing his best ball these last few weeks no no not at all just a turnover machine yeah then we have dallas at miami i thought this was one of the best bets of the year because dallas as an underdog coming off of an embarrassing loss i know they're on the road but we know that miami has not beaten the team over 500 mm-hmm. in a long long time and I know Dallas hasn't done great against 500 teams, but they did beat Philly a couple weeks ago. And this game was pretty close. And if Dallas, if Dak doesn't fumble on the one-yard line of the goal line at the beginning of the game, I think they win this game. And the two points, definitely, that was the difference. Like, if they were 27 to 20 at then there, do we really think the Dolphins would have been able to score a touchdown to tie it at then? I mean, who mm-hmm. knows? It's just crazy to me. Yeah, I mean, this was definitely one of the best bets on the board, though. I mean, Dallas underdogs like and plus miami. money yeah i mean know miami, miami's been a little bit of a pretender right so i just i can't believe it but hey i mean good it, for it really could have gone either way i mean it, it was a two-point have. game you literally said last week in the pod i think you said that you could see this game finishing like a 21 19 or like something like i think you Did said I? a two-point like i mean finish. i knew it was gonna be close like the fact that it's in miami will help them but yeah oh. I just that one really surprised me yeah. of the entire year. Like I felt so good about Dallas, mm-hmm. and honestly, I felt good about Jacksonville too. Yeah, I'm a little sad about uh, Tyreek though. He, I don't know that he's gonna break this record anymore. Oh, he won't. He won't. There's, yeah, he had to <clears throat> average like 170 games or 170 yards after he missed that one game. And there's no way you're going to average 170 yards over yeah. three games. So. I mean, he could have an Amari Cooper game, you know, and put up 260 next week. And then he, he could. could, you know, he would only need, I think it's like, I think that's what he needs now. It's like mm-hmm. 170 per game. So yeah, like if I mean, he puts up, just, you know, 200 one going week. Going up against the Ravens and oh, the Oh, I mean, Bills. I totally agree. <laughs> Maybe if he was playing like Washington, and like another bad secondary team, yeah. it's possible. But yeah, missing that one game definitely hurt. Right. And what happened to Jalen Waddle? He catches like a forty-nine yard touch or a pass to open the gates, and then mm-hmm. like he doesn't do a thing. I think he got banged up a little bit. Yeah, maybe he was just trying to take a little nap or <laughs> one of my like, many fantasy cardio. players that just disappeared into the night. Dude, along it was with just Cortland Sutton. such a brutal week for you all around. I mean, dude, I have bad. like my stats. Like four of my players got knocked out of the game. Two of which were my quarterbacks. Yeah. Corlin Sutton got knocked out with their one reception attempt Mm -hmm. and I guess a concussion. So he got zero points. So it was just tough for me, man. Yeah. It's very sad. Anyways, Arizona at Chicago. Chicago did pull this one out and covered. 
but it was a little precarious toward the end there. I don't know why the Cardinals went for two and they could have made it 17-24. I don't really understand that decision, but yeah. Yeah, I mean, Justin Fields played okay. He did have a pick. I feel like I still don't think like Justin Fields is the answer for Chicago. They need mm-hmm. to trade him. And I think a lot of teams could be interested. Seattle, the Falcons, for example. Right. Especially the Falcons. I think the Falcons would be the best place for him to go. Even though they've won a few of these games, he hasn't been dominant or anything of the sort. Like if he was playing like he played against Denver and Washington earlier in the year, I would probably think differently. But mm-hmm. he's been just mediocre. Yeah, no, I agree. He's he's definitely not the answer. I'm a little surprised that the Bears did manage to pull off the win in the end here. I mean, they just have the tendency to not be able to close they out do. those games. And, you know, it kind of seemed like it was trending that way. But, you know, yeah, the Bears I mean, just they were managed. up 21 to nothing and then it ends 24 to 16. <laughs> right. I mean, you've got to so. be able to close out games stronger than that. For sure, for sure. I mean, they barely did anything in the second half. I think they only scored yeah. three points in the second half. That's just embarrassing. It's just reminiscent of the Broncos game yeah. and, you know, the Lions. Like, they, I know that they got the win, but they've got to do better. They do. At least they covered. Yeah. <laughs> New England at Denver. Oh, my goodness gracious. Denver this was a was crazy. Gross. No, they was definitely a gross game, dude. Yeah. It was just the wildest start dumb, here, though. Yeah, I mean... There was a whole bunch of turnovers in this game. There was that double fumble yeah. during the kickoff or punt return. Mm-hmm. And Denver was knocking on the door multiple times. They should have easily won this game at the end there. They had an opportunity to do so. I cannot believe that New England's kicker, who's been the worst kicker in the league, nailed a 56-yard field goal to win it was nuts. in those conditions. That was absolutely crazy to me. Like, where did this Chad Ryland pull that out of? The dude's been missing like 39 yarders consistently (laughs) all year. And then he slams a 56 yarder, probably because it was in Denver and, you know, the altitude maybe it carries the ball a little bit more. But did you bet on him to like go under like one and a half field goals? And so, of course, he had to soar (laughs) over. (laughs) I did not. I did not. I'm not betting on Chad Ryland, a little (laughs) piddly piddly kicker. But. Poor Denver, though, is really what I would say after this. I mean, you had an easy game here to take advantage of, and you lost to one of the worst teams in the league. Congrats. Yeah, this is just ridiculous. I mean, Denver had just such a weird season overall. Mm. They start off so cold, lose five, uh, I think five of their first six or something like that. Yep. They were like one and, and then five. they win five. And then they win five, and then now they're just on a losing streak again. It's yeah, just Yeah, two-game losing streak. I can't believe it either. Not good, not good for them, but an improvement over last year, so there's yeah. that. But hey, man, if they won these last couple games or if they took advantage of some of these easier games, they could be in contention for the division mm-hmm. because Kansas City's been losing so much as well. Which is it's just actually wild. crazy how bad that division has become when I we know. thought that it was actually going to be really good. Mm-hmm. Speaking of that division, Vegas at Kansas City to open up Christmas Day. I just can't believe this game. I mean... Vegas had a 14 or 17 to nothing lead, I think, in the last game they played at home. Mm-hmm. Kansas City came roaring back and won like 28 to 17. Yep. So now they have a less of a deficit at home, Kansas City does, and they can't come back. I really enjoy watching this game because, like, I love seeing Patrick Mahomes, the best, you know, try and play navigate adversity and, yeah, yeah, try and win this game. Really reminiscent of the Super Bowl against the Bucks and Tom Brady a few years ago when his offensive line was just so bad. Mm-hmm. He had no time to throw and was just running for his life. It really was similar to that, except now he doesn't have Tyreek Hill. Right. So that makes it even harder. I just, man, Travis Kelsey's not really doing anything, hasn't had a touchdown in weeks, struggling to get open, it seems. Mm-hmm. Rasheed Rice was okay, but everyone else is just... Sloppy. I mean, <laughs> who had the fumble? So Isaiah Pacheco... Had a fumble six. That was one of the defensive core scores. Patrick Mahomes with the pick six. Mm-hmm. So that was 14 points for the Raiders there. I mean, Aiden O'Connell played horrible. I think he he completed some of his first few passes, and then he went on a nine incompletion streak, a nine pass incompletion streak. Disgusting. Devontae Adams with only one catch for four yards. So if you're the Chiefs, this was an ugly, ugly loss for you. Mm-hmm. And it really is scary going into the playoffs where you need to be playing your best ball. Yeah, I mean, it really does seem like this was, you know, a Las Vegas Christmas miracle for them yeah. because 
I mean, they they didn't score an offensive touchdown the whole game. Like they no, didn't. No, I mean do... their offense was horrendous. Yeah, in this I, game. I mean, I had said to start Jacoby Myers, and you know, on that first drive, he had a couple nice grabs, <laughs> and or I guess in the first quarter, yeah. but like after that, nothing. Like I yeah, literally I mean, checked it. Is the... Aiden O'Connell could not complete a pass. Yeah, it's just embarrassing. I mean, it was combined with him being bad, and also Kansas City's defense just playing really tight coverage. Right. Like there were a couple times where like. Devonte Adams just couldn't get any separation. I saw, mm-hmm. but yeah, I mean, great pick for you, dude. This is probably one of the biggest underdogs I think in the, the whole pod that was selected. Thank like, you. I can't think of a underdog that was eleven and a half points that one of us picked. I really don't think there was one. Man, maybe not. I think that I picked like Houston, maybe in like week two or three against like a team that was like really solid. Yeah, it's possible. Yeah, I'll have to go back and check the docs on that. But yeah, definitely. Yeah, this probably was. You know, one of the largest ones, though. Yeah, like even the Giants-Green Bay game I picked, that was only a six-and-a-half-point underdog. Oh, wow. Anyways, moving on. Speaking of the Giants, at Philadelphia, they made this game relatively interesting. Coming back from a large deficit, just 20 battling. 23 at yeah. halftime, yeah. I mean, good for them. They were really battling the entire game. Tommy DeVito getting a little roughed up and having Tyrod Taylor came in and he threw that monstrous touchdown pass of Darius Slayton to keep them into it. Saquon had a really good game. And Jalen Hurts, I think, had a pick six in this game, which wasn't great. But, mm-hmm. yeah, I mean, he still put up enough points, and it's at Philly. So remember I said in the pod last week, this might be a tough game for them when they have to play in the Giants' home stadium in a mm-hmm. couple of weeks. But this one, I would definitely say I would lean a Philly on. But I did take the Giants to cover. I don't think I put it in the pod, but that was an easy cover for me and I like that but yeah pretty good game to watch I was a little worried these Christmas games would not be great but they all were okay yeah dude uh Philly looked really dominant here in the first half and then they come back from halftime mm-hmm. and then I don't know what happened dude they yeah coach like didn't give him a pep talk he <laughs> gave him like a hinder talk like <laughs> you know they yeah. were they were just looking like bozos out there and yeah the Giants, it was not a good look for them the yeah. Giants really went up and down the field on them most of the time and mm-hmm. pick six certainly didn't help yeah for sure we have Baltimore at San Fran to close out the week, Christmas night. And, man, yeah, Santa came down the chimney in San Fran and <laughs> left them left them a bunch of coal or four interceptions for Brock Purdy. Brock Purdy must have not gotten what he wanted for Christmas because he was he was naughty. Like, ugh. Although I will say a couple of his picks really weren't his fault. One of them got deflected way up into the air and then picked off. Another one was also deflected off of like George Kittle and then kind of bounced into Kyle Hamilton's hands. The first one was not a great decision, so there was that. But I do think it was a little bit more fluky. I hate everyone's probably going to be gone. Brock Perry's case again, just when they lost those three games, calling him a fraud and all that. But hey, people have these types of games against good teams, and two of the picks really I thought were fluky. So let's just call it a two-pick game. He did throw for a ton of yards and was still pretty efficient they did put up points i really think this would have been a closer game if they didn't have those fluky picks Mm -hmm. so i mean hey got handed to the ravens they played well lamar jackson put up some decent numbers but didn't do anything spectacular i will say though brock purdy opened the door for josh allen to win the mvp because lamar even though he won this game like if you just look at his stats his stats have not been that good hasn't been having the production that he had when he had his MVP Mm -hmm. year. So I really do think if Josh Allen plays well these next couple games and they beat the Dolphins in the final week, he'll win MVP. Yeah, I mean, that could certainly happen. I think that Lamar, honestly, would probably still be the front runner, though, after the game last night, just because it... I mean, he definitely is the favorite now, but I just don't think when they look at it at the end of the season... Yeah, more holistically. Yeah, yeah, because this was exactly what happened in college football. Like, these... Bo Nix and Michael Penix were like the favorites all season. And then like one thing happens at the end of the season. And Mm -hmm. then Jaden Daniels just comes out of nowhere and wins it. And it wasn't even that close. I think something similar could happen here. Everyone's looking at Brock Purdy, Lamar Jackson. Even though Lamar won, I think he's only at like 19 passing touchdowns, seven interceptions, a couple fumbles, obviously a lot of rushing stats. But I mean, Josh Allen, I think has better rushing stats way more passing touchdowns, way right. more yards, obviously more turnovers. But I think at the end of the day, in terms of the definition of MVP, he fits it more yeah. because of 
just the team around him and the adversity they went through earlier on, whereas Baltimore, Mm -hmm. they just have such a great team around them. Their defense has just been playing phenomenally. I think that was the MVP of this game in Mm -hmm. particular. Yeah, no, I agree with that. I would love to see, you know, Josh Allen win. He's my favorite player. Um, I think Brock Purdy is, you know, kind of writing himself out of it oh, after that after performance that. Yeah. last Especially, night. Especially, I mean, the head-to-head. If Lamar yeah. Jackson, since he's right up there with him in terms of the right. odds, you know, you got the head-to-head on your side now for mm-hmm. Lamar. So I think the odds will probably be Lamar. He'll probably be favorite right now, but I think Josh yeah. Allen would have the second-best odds. Probably. I actually saw this thing. Um, it was some guy who bet five grand on Brock Purdy to win MVP. I think it was at like the very start of the season or something mm-hmm. like that, and it yeah. was like plus four thousand odds. So it was five grand to pay out oh, two hundred thousand, wow. and I think he had just sold it before the game last night so for a, smart for a hundred and twenty five thousand. I mean, I think he was like Brock Purdy was at one point minus two twenty five for MVP. That's crazy. I mean. I can't believe that. Some of the odds on these MVP, they're just they so overreactionary. Yeah. They just go back and forth all the time. Feel bad for the guy who just wasted 125 racks on this ticket, though, who's now no longer going to uh, you know, be able to cash out. Oh, I thought you did say he cashed out. No, so like the guy like sold it to another better. Oh, they didn't like shoot. cash out. He just like sold it to another oh, well, better. At least the original guy. Yeah, got <laughs> the, ori- money, the original though. guy is fine. <laughs> he made 120 grand, oh, but the new guy is going to be out 125 grand because yeah, Brock well, Purdy's not winning. I would probably this. hold on to that and see how Brock Purdy, and maybe you're able to get a little bit more back for it. But yeah. I still don't think that he'll ever become as good of odds as he was going into that oh, game. Oh, I agree for sure. Take a look at our week 16 start and sit. You got some green on there. Wow, I like to finally. see it. I'm so happy. T Higgins was the reason that I was so projected well in my fantasy matchup. Cause he was on Saturday, put up mm-hmm. 25 points for monster me. touchdown. I know he just, yeah. Cause he's played fantastic against Minnesota the week before when mm-hmm. I sat him. So I made sure to start him this week and that worked out well. Garrett Wilson had a decent week as well. Nothing too crazy, but good enough. Sitting Jordan Love, I just thought the Panthers' defense was a little bit better. And he did have, you know, he wasn't phenomenal in any way, but two passing touchdowns, one rushing touchdown, so he was productive. And, yeah, there you have that. That was a good week for you, bro. I'll take it. I'll take it. Thank you. Uh, Mine was not so good. I struggled a little (laughs) bit with my starts and sits this week. I don't have any green on mine, sadly. It was just – I, I kind of like yours as a little medley of the Christmas colors. You know, you got yeah. two greens and one red, and mine is just like a, I don't I know. know, teacher graded me with an F, yeah. like a C me. <laughs> I don't like it. I had Jacoby Myers, who looked good at first with his 43 yards on like three catches, but after right. that, got absolutely nothing. <laughs> so he finished with only like six yeah, points. Yeah, was tough. Kate Otten, I, you know, I thought with Tampa Bay looking so hot these days, Baker emerging. He just that, didn't get any of the action. Yeah, I know. It's sad. He had one nice catch for like seven yards, and that was it. And then I said to sit Devin Singletary and Damian Pierce. Um, This was okay. Neither of them were in double digits. Um, If your league counts touchdowns like from kickoffs, which I think most leagues do, then Damian Pierce had a nice touchdown there. Um, Didn't really hurt my kicker. Yeah, I I know. (laughs) I'm sorry about that, big guy. Um, yeah, nothing else really out of Pierce, and then Singletary didn't really have a a great game, so it was an okay sit. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Moving on to our best bets from the week. Just a tough week, and for college football, man, it just sucks. I was really off on the Utah Northwestern game. I just thought that Bryson Barnes would play better for Utah, but they lost the game straight up, so that was not good. And it went over or it went under forty two because they couldn't score. Air Force did win and cover against James Madison, so I got that. Of course, like we mentioned, Jacksonville, Tampa Bay missed the over by one point. Dallas at Miami under 51 did hit, though, so that was good. Arizona plus four and a half may have kind of almost hit, but unfortunately not. Dallas money line, Jacksonville money line, womp, womp, womp. Cleveland plus two and a half, though. If you got that early in the week, you're feeling really good, especially if you got money line early in the week because they one outright dude that's a crazy bet i can't believe cleveland was underdogs in yeah, that game they thought honestly. cj was gonna play yeah but i saw like a report that he was still having headaches and mm-hmm. they're never gonna let you go out and play if you're still having some sort yeah. of symptoms no yeah that was really sharp uh washington plus three cashed for me 
in crazy fashion. Yeah, I, I can't believe real. that that hit. I honestly was not looking good initially. Yeah, I mean that seemed like the most unlikely one to hit. To be honest, um, Buffalo minus twelve and a half did not yeah, hit. Sadly. I like that bet. I really like that bet. So did I, man. But not I, even close. <laughs> yeah, I know. It's a little frustrating there. And New Orleans plus four. They they were finished the game. They lost by eight. There was ninety seven percent that was bet yeah. on the Rams. And normally when you see numbers yeah. that high, that right. it, it always leans the other it way. It was a good value bet for sure, but I think that went down a little bit and yeah, I did end up liking Rams to cover just because mm-hmm. they've looked so much they better. Have. And New Orleans has been so streaky, and they can't put a full game together. Yeah, I mean, it was just more a pick out of the fact that ninety seven yeah, right. percent was on the Rams relative to you know the yeah. Saints. I didn't actually, like, I didn't necessarily worth. think they would cover plus four. It's just I get scared when <laughs> I see so much public yeah. money on one side. No, I hear you. I hear you. Anyways, hopefully we can have a better week for the second to last week of the NFL regular season. Starting off with the final Thursday night football game, Jets at Cleveland. Cleveland's seven-point favorites, I believe, as it stands now. I do like them to win and cover that game. I just feel that their defense is going to be able to shut down whoever it is, whether it be Zach Wilson or Trevor Simeon. I think they shut down Brees Hall as well. I don't think Cleveland has a humongous offensive game like they have had the last couple weeks, but I think they scored just enough. I probably would like the under in this game. Mm -hmm. It kind of feels like a 24-10 game. Yeah, that's solid. Um, I'm also going to roll Cleveland here. I agree. I think that the Jets' defense is decent enough to where it will be able to subdue Cleveland's offense a little bit. So definitely not a huge game out of them, but... Their offense, honestly, seems like it's been looking kind of better with Flacco than it did with Deshaun Watson, Oh, 110%. which is crazy. It's 100%. just crazy to me. And, yeah, you know, Cleveland's defense is super solid. I don't see the Jets, you know, yeah. being able to do a whole lot here. So I would I would take the under. What would have been Aaron Rodgers versus Deshaun Watson is now Trevor Simeon versus <laughs> Joe Flacco. Who would have thought? Dude, that's a wild concoction of QBs. <laughs> Detroit at Dallas, the only Saturday game. Dallas six and a half point favorites here. I like Dallas to win and maybe even cover, but I do think there's some good value in Detroit. I mean, you wouldn't think that Detroit with a better record than Dallas by a full game would be underdogs by almost, well, over a touchdown. I guess, you know, kind of like a touchdown and half of an extra (laughs) point. But I think there's some good value there, but... I don't know. I would like to probably stay away from this game. I'm kind of going off the same logic I did against the Miami game. Dallas losing now two kind of embarrassing games in a row on the road. We know how good they are at home. We know how not so good Detroit is on the road. So I really do like Dallas here to bounce back. And, man, Detroit's defense is not looking great. I mean, Mm -hmm. sure, they picked off Nick Mullins four times, but that's Nick Mullins. This is Dak. Right, it's a little bit better. Exactly, yeah. I mean, Dak has definitely improved his performance this year. And like you said, the Cowboys are at home here. The Cowboys have not even been trailing for a single second at home this entire season. Yeah, they're just so lethal at home. Exactly. So you've got to roll with Dallas this week. Um, yeah, like I do think Detroit, you know, they stand a chance to put up some some like, good points. I think but there's like, some good value in the money line pick, honestly, because I mean, because they're Dallas has looked suspect the last couple of weeks. And yeah, I mean, knows, they're maybe, a ten win team, yeah. so like I I agree, like there's definitely value right. there, but I do think that after those two losses, plus Dallas at home, they are going to win this week. I agree. Tennessee at Houston, CJ Stroud likely to return here. I'm shocked you're taking Houston. I mean, after what I've seen from Tennessee the last couple of weeks, it's just been disappointing. Yeah. Especially when they gave up the lead at home to Houston against a backup quarterback. I can't right. in my right mind take Tennessee now on the road going up against the starter. I just can't do it. Mm-hmm. I like C.J. Stroud to come back and regalvanize the troops and maybe make a late playoff push. We know that they have to travel, or I think it might be at home, or travel to Indianapolis to conclude the week, and that could be a pretty important game for them to Mm -hmm. see if they could sneak into the playoffs, maybe win the division. Probably not, though, because they don't have the tiebreaker against Jacksonville. Yeah, Houston's definitely got more on the line here. I I like Houston a lot this week. Tennessee, they're not making the playoffs. And, you know... Unless Derrick Henry was uh, QB hey, for the week, I don't know that Ryan I'd be. Ryan <laughs> Tannehill's kind of owned the Texans for his career, though. I don't think Tannehill. Not this week. Tannehill has probably only lost like one game to the Texans his entire career, and it was his first year at Tennessee. 
against Deshaun Watson. I think that's the only time he's ever lost mm-hmm. to te- or to Houston. But so. it's it's really Derrick Henry who's like never lost to Houston because Derrick Henry oh, come on and historically, Dude. bro, Derrick Henry like puts up like thirty percent of his entire rushing yards for the season against that's Houston fair. alone. I do remember this game toward the end of the season. Houston was up, I think, at the end of the game by like a point or two. Mm-hmm. And Tana, there was only like 17 seconds left or something, or maybe like 30-something. Tannehill threw like a 50-yard pass to get him in the field goal range. And then the kick, it like bounced off the upright and still made it in, and they won that game. Wow. So we'll see. Maybe Tannehill could brew up some good magic and <laughs> finish the season on a good note because he would probably like to play somewhere else next year. It's like he's auditioning. Yeah. Atlanta at Chicago. Looks like you changed your pick on this one. No, I had I had Atlanta the oh, whole time. I thought time. you had Chicago. No, I had Atlanta the whole time. Well, I am going to take Chicago. I'm not really sure why, but I do like them at home. Atlanta coming into the cold. They're used to playing in a dome. And Chicago's kind of been dominant toward Atlanta over the last couple years, although they did lose to them last year. I think they have a little bit of revenge game here, both mm-hmm. Justin Fields and Matt Eberflus coaching for future positions in other areas other spots across the league and i like them to kind of finish off strong here i know atlanta's had a pretty good defense but chicago has been really solid at home especially recently so i will take them yeah i like the pick honestly i think that's a good one i am gonna roll with atlanta though i think that they just have a little bit more on the line they've got a better likelihood of making the playoffs i know that there's there's a very slim chance Mm -hmm. that either team gets in yeah you know, the Bears would need like a million different things to happen. They would. <laughs> yeah, I know there's like a 1% chance. But I, I think that Atlanta, you know, has more on the line here. And even with their performance last week against Indianapolis, it just feels like they, they had a really solid game. And I want to continue to, you know, see if they can prove that here in Chicago this weekend. Yeah, they did play well, surprisingly, against Indianapolis. So Yeah, against another team in the contention for the playoffs. Right. So we'll see what happens here. Miami at Baltimore, one of the best games of the week. Mm -hmm. I am going to take Baltimore. Both teams coming off of impressive emotional wins, although Mm -hmm. I think Miami's was a bit more kind of emotional and anxious, anxiety-inducing. Right. So I want to take Baltimore here, man. Like It's a tough spot to pick for sure, though, because maybe Baltimore feels like they got locked up and they kind of take their foot off the gas, but they've just looked so complete over the last Mm -hmm. month-plus Miami's have a few holes in the armor, I'd say. I think they got a little lucky to beat Dallas, so I think they come back down to earth here. And you look at the stretch of games, Miami, Dallas, Buffalo next week, they're bound to lose one of these games, probably two. I think this is where they stumble here. I think this is what the NFL wants. They want them to lose this game, so then the Buffalo-Miami game next week is much more meaningful Mm because if Miami wins, then it doesn't matter at all. That's probably... Honestly, a really smart pick because they're going to want to get more viewers to tune oh, yeah. in for this like kind of mm-hmm. crazy game that they could you know toss up at. That would be the Sunday prime night time football game. game. That would one hundred percent be yeah. Sunday night football. No, you're totally right. I actually I did put Miami down here, but I love the Baltimore pick. I had said last week that there's not a single team that I would take to beat the 49ers, regardless of whether or not 49ers were at home or away, and Baltimore comes in and they beat them. And yet I'm taking Miami over Baltimore here. I just really, I I don't know. It just kind of feels right to me after their win against Dallas. I really, I can't even honestly explain it. I I don't have a a lot of methodology behind it. I mean, Baltimore could take their foot off the gas after a big win against the best team in the league. And I mean, I don't know. I mean, but your thought process behind like this game going to Baltimore so that next week matters more is feels like it's more likely to happen. If Miami didn't lose to Dallas, they're losing to the Ravens. If they beat Mm -hmm. if they beat Baltimore, then I would have thought they lost to the Cowboys. Like you can't win both these games. Yeah. Can't be greedy about it. New Orleans at Tampa Bay. I don't know, man. I feel like this is a game that New Orleans is going to win. Tampa Bay beat New Orleans pretty good at their own place earlier in the season. That's when Derek Carr got knocked out, though. I like – actually, that was when he was playing hurt. But I like New Orleans to kind of come in off a couple extra days of rest and preparation and beat Tampa in their own place, make the division a little bit more interesting. I think Tampa Bay is due for a loss. They went on the road to Green Bay, beat them, beat Jacksonville. They've been being good teams, and Baker Mayfield's looked awesome. I just think this is one of their games. They kind of take a step back down to earth Mm -hmm. and lose. 
I don't know, man. I don't I don't love this pick. I'm actually going to roll Tampa Bay here. Very fair, very fair. Yeah, I mean, I just feel like you got to ride the hot hand here, and Tampa's got more to play for. I mean, they need to win this game to you know keep up so with their... So is New Orleans, though. If New Orleans wins, they'll have the same record. Yeah, well, I mean, I feel like Tampa... Tampa could still lose this game and make the playoffs. Yeah, I guess that's true. I mean, would you have taken New Orleans over Jacksonville? No, I mean, I mean, well, I guess I did back when they played, but <laughs> oh, did you? I did because that's when Trevor Lawrence was maybe not playing, but then oh, he did end up playing. Okay, and that's right. That was another game where New Orleans fought all the way back just not to win. No, and that's New Orleans right. has been doing that all year. I just, I feel like this is kind of a trap game for Tampa Bay. Oh, it but certainly I like could your be. Pick, yeah. You know, I like your pick for sure. I actually had Tampa originally, but. I convinced myself to go New Orleans. Okay. New England at Buffalo. Definitely going to take Buffalo here. Not much to say about at all. I think it's a blowout. Yeah, I mean, they're just mad about that scrappy game that they lost a couple weeks back to New England. They're not going to let that happen again. Rolling Buffalo, too. Arizona at Philadelphia. Again, Philadelphia is liable to blow out the Cardinals here. Cardinals. What else can you say? It's in their best favor to lose to improve their draft to pick. I think. Kyler Murray's able to put up a few points against Eagles because their defense is really suspect. Mm-hmm. But ultimately, I think Philadelphia wins pretty handedly. Yeah, I mean, I I really don't have anything else to add. It just feels like the obvious pick, Philly over Arizona here. Yeah, and I think they're like 14, 12 and a half point favorites or yeah. something. Then we have Carolina at Jacksonville. Carolina looking better the last couple of weeks. Jacksonville at the lowest point of the entire season, I would mm-hmm. say here. I do think they bounce back and win. But it's really hard to put much stock into this team the way they've looked the last few weeks. It's really highly disappointing to have squandered Mm -hmm. such a good start to the season. Because let's remember, I think last season they finished either nine and eight or ten and seven and won the division. You think this year, wow, they're eight and three. They're going to have a much better season than last year. Mm -hmm. And now it looks like they might only have one better game, one win more than last season, which is just crazy to think about. But, yeah, they need to win this one here. They have the easiest remaining schedule in the entire league at, I think, a percentage of 23.8% in terms of Mm -hmm. the combined winning percentage of Carolina and Tennessee. Yeah, I mean, that's just crazy. Um, I am going to take Jacksonville here. However, I don't love the pick. I honestly wanted to take Carolina with the way that Jacksonville has been playing. One of my bets this week is Carolina at plus seven. I could definitely see this game coming down to the wire again, similar to mm-hmm. the Green Bay game where it could yeah. come down to just a last-second field possible. goal to end the game here. Obviously, you know you can't put a whole lot of stock in Carolina. They have sucked the entire season. But just the way that Jacksonville has been playing, they've looked really sloppy, and T-Law might not even play this week. He, I know he hasn't missed a game yet. He's been tough. Yeah, I know. He's a resilient little... Because there's been multiple times where it was like down to the last second against New Orleans, Cleveland, yeah. and against Tampa Bay where he was questionable and mm-hmm. then he ended up playing after all. Yeah. So he's just been a trooper. Yeah, that's wild. But So I honestly would not be surprised if Carolina won this game, which is crazy to say, but I'm still going to roll with Jacksonville. Fair enough. Vegas at Indianapolis, kind of a big game for playoffs. If Vegas wins, they are actually 8-8 eight and eight and kind of still in the conversation. Also wild to me. And this is uh, the one that I switched because I originally did have Vegas and then I yeah. changed it back to I like Indianapolis. Indianapolis pretty good in this game. I just think they bounce back after that bad loss to the Falcons. Mm-hmm. And I think Vegas, they had their fun. They spoiled Kansas City's Christmas. But if you can't complete a pass in the second half, really, then you're not going to be able to beat legit teams in the league. Yeah, I mean, it's exactly my thoughts You're not going to get two more defensive scores. Right, yeah. I mean, it seems like Indianapolis needs the lead or needs the win so that they can still make the playoffs. And and Vegas is not a playoff caliber team. I would hate if they snuck in somehow. I mean, that would just be ridiculous. They don't deserve to be in. I mean, they went like two, three quarters without completing a pass. I mean, it was just ridiculous. Yeah, they would probably get blown out by the Dolphins or the Bills in the first round of the playoffs if they were to make it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, what a, they're just such a weird team, bro. They go, so three weeks ago, they put up 63 or two, <laughs> three weeks ago, they don't put up any points at all. Two weeks ago, they put up 63. And then last week, they put up 
zero offensive touchdowns. I know. So it's like back and forth in terms of how their offense yeah, has been I playing. Mean, it's just so. ridiculousness. So I, I am going to take the Colts here. I originally had Vegas because I was like, maybe they could sneak into the playoffs, but it doesn't feel like they're set to win this game. No, I don't think so at all. Even if they did win this game, I don't think they make it. It just opens the door for Houston, Pittsburgh, or Cincinnati if they were to win. Yeah. Rams at Giants. Definitely like the Rams here coming off of some extra days mm-hmm. of practice, even though they have to travel all the way over to the East Coast, and the Giants have looked pretty good. I just think that Tyrod Taylor may be starring. Tommy DeVito doesn't really matter. The Rams have been so dominant over the last month and a mm-hmm. half. Only lost to Baltimore. I like them to win and probably even cover. Same here. I think that they really need to get this win in order to stay in the playoff race. They want to beat the Giants. Just come in to New York City. I guess not actually New York City, but MetLife Stadium and take them to Pound Town. 100%. Next up, we have San Fran at Washington. Love San Fran to bounce back in a big way. We know Washington's defense is one of the worst in the league, if not the worst statistically. Mm -hmm. Brock Purdy probably has a monster game bouncing back and Christian McCaffrey runs all over them and they get right back on track right back to normal yeah I mean I you know I could run a million simulations here (laughs) and I don't see a single one where Washington beats San Fran like one out of a hundred I mean San Fran is I know that the Ravens you know just beat them last week but they would before that they were you know the number one team in the league they're you know maybe number two now and Washington honestly feels like they're like the 30 31 or 32 been ranked so bad. Team. I mean, Sam Hall has been such a disappointment awful. down the stretch. Yeah, so I would not be taking Washington in any scenario here. Pittsburgh at Seattle. Kind of a tough game to pick. Feels like one of those sneaky games Pittsburgh could win, but since it is in Seattle, I'm going to roll with them. They have a lot more. I mean, I guess both teams are about the same record, so kind of both competing for a playoff spot, but mm-hmm. just feels like Seattle is the better team. Pittsburgh has a big quarterback issue. I know Mason Rudolph had a good game, but Christmas is over. Yeah, exactly, bro. No more Rudolph the Reindeer. No, he's exactly. Just, yeah, he's time to step back. He can't guide Santa's sleigh through the night anymore because yeah, no. Christmas is over. He's got to wait another year. Yeah, it's so going to be wet in Seattle. It's going to be cold dude, and wet, and exactly. Rudolph's going to want to just stay in the stable. Dude, he <laughs> has to. So, yeah, we're, we're rolling with the Seabirds this week. Them Seabirds. Yeah. Cincinnati at Kansas City. Kind of, it would have been a better game if Joe Burrow was playing. I mean, I know you like Jake Browning. I know you like your other JB. But I think Kansas City bounces back. Could be a decent game, though. Jake Browning's liable to throw for like 400 yards in this game. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't be surprised if he does. But I think he turns the ball over a little bit more. And Kansas City pulls away with a much-needed victory. Yeah, if Cincinnati had won last week against Pittsburgh, I actually would be taking them in this game, but I really saw a lot of weakness yeah, in Cincinnati. Yeah, their defense did not look good at all. I mean, if Mason Rudolph could yeah. torch them, then Patrick Mahomes, even with these bad receivers, <laughs> exactly, they have, should yeah. be able to take care Kadarius of Kadarius Tony can be playing for Cincinnati, and I still think that the Chiefs yeah, will be I'm able sure to, will, you know. <laughs> to get this win here. Yeah, it just was spooky to me that you know Pittsburgh kind of ate up Browning, and they just you know really showed his weaknesses did not like that kansas city in a really dark spot dude i mean they are just <laughs> a dark, of, in a hole the depths, yeah. trying to crawl out but yeah they should be able to get a much needed victory here against cincinnati and if russell wilson and sean Payne were clicking a little bit better in denver if justin herbert wasn't hurt and they didn't have brand staley like they could be in trouble yeah they chose a good year to have a down year right because they're still in perfect spot yeah. to make the playoffs win their division have a home game mm-hmm. although they are completely out of it for the one seed yeah chargers at denver i'm gonna take denver here i think they finally get a much needed win i mean easton six been playing all right chargers have been looking decent i mean obviously they had that horrendous pounding against vegas inexplicable but i just think that it's a little bit much of a closer game and we know what happened we already seen this movie easton stick versus the broncos when justin herbert got hurt a few weeks ago it was against the broncos and easton stick came in i think it's sequel to that part two and denver's able to shut him down once again especially at home yeah certainly a fair pick there i am going to take the chargers though i feel like uh Denver's just been one of those cold teams, and when the teams are on the cold streak, I don't generally like to 
to bet them. Yeah, they are cold for sure. Yeah, so I'm going to I'm going to take the Chargers here, especially with as close as they kept it with a team as good as the Bills last week. I like the Chargers to win this one. Green Bay at Minnesota to close out the week. I guess this is Monday Night Football. Surprisingly, Minnesota is favored, but I am going to take Green Bay here. I just think that Jordan Love and the receivers they got going on over there, even with Christian Watson out, even with Jalen Reed out, they got players all over the place, young players making plays. Aaron Jones having a really good game. Mm -hmm. So I don't think Minnesota will be much of an issue to them. They're trending downward. Although, man, their defense, Green Bay's defense is just so bad. If Nick Mullins has been throwing the ball over the place, he could have another humongous game, another 400-yard game. Although I just, this is a tough one for me. I do kind of want to switch my pick because Green Bay's defense <laughs> has just been so abysmal. But I'm going to continue. I'm going to roll with Green Bay. This was the toughest one on the slate for me as well. I actually went back and forth with this one. I originally had Minnesota, then yeah. changed it to Green Bay. And then I wanted to change it back to Minnesota, but I left it kind of exactly you know what you just described right now. Such a tough game because like neither of these teams, like, has a great chance of making the playoffs, and yet no. they both still can, as crazy as that yeah, sounds. Yeah, Vikings is a game ahead of them, I, I mean, believe, right? Oh, no, they have the same They I have the same record. Yeah. yeah, I mean, both teams, I mean, they just look sloppy. Like, Green Bay barely pulls off a win against Carolina, and Minnesota's, you know, Nick Mullins throwing four picks. I know he put up a lot of yardage, but it just makes it tough to pick a winner here. So Yeah, some of these games, some of these teams are just hard to figure out. Like yeah. the Colts and the Saints, always hard to pick. Yeah, those mediocre teams, just very yeah, tough. Middle of the road. Anyways, that is that. Moving on to our start and sit. I like Travis Etienne. I just think that they're able to run the ball like Aaron Jones did against the Panthers. I like starring Jordan Addison if he's healthy. We know how bad Green Bay's defense is, like we said. And I think that Justin Jefferson has struggled a little bit against Green Bay in his history. Mm -hmm. Jair Alexander's been able to shut him down. Yep. So if Jordan Addison is healthy, I like him to have a bigger game. I'm going to sit Garrett Wilson, though. I just think that Cleveland's defense is so good that they should be able to shut down Trevor Simeon with ease. Good pick. Yeah, I agree with Thank those. You. Um for my week 17 start and sits, I am going to start David Njoku this week, tight end on the Browns. Now, Joe Flacco has seemed like he really likes to get this guy the ball. Oh, he's yeah. had, I mean, he's had like three touchdowns in the last two he's weeks been or something like that. Yeah, so I Even think, with Amari Cooper going off, he's still getting a lot of love. Exactly, yeah. So I like him to get a touchdown this week. And then this one is going to be questionable here. I'm starting Drake London, which is kind of a, a wild pick. But he's facing the Bears, and I don't love the Bears' defense. So I think that he's liable to He's been struggling get, lately dude, a little he, bit. I mean, he has. I mean, you know. Heineke got it to Pitts last week for a yeah, touchdown. that was good to see. Yeah, not showing London a whole lot of action, but I think that this could be a week, kind of just one of those weeks where he, mm -hmm. I mean, he's only had like one, like this whole season where he went nuts and had like 14 targets. I know, and like, yeah, that was a big know, game for him. 20-some points, but I feel like it could be one this week. Yeah. And then finally, I'm going to sit Jared Goff. I feel like this is going to be a game where he has – a Some lot of yardage. Numbers. I think it's going to be a lot of yardage, but I don't think he's going to get any touchdowns. I think he's going to get like all of them are going mm -hmm. to be handoffs to like Jameer Gibbs or kind of like that Ravens game that he had a while back. Yeah, he this had a could, bunch of yards and a lot mm -hmm. of attempts, but I don't think he had any touchdowns. Yeah, exactly. So like against Dallas, like I feel like he's going to have a lot of yardage because mm -hmm. these teams are going to be going back and forth. But yeah. I think they're going to get down to the goal line and Jameer Gibbs. I think he's going to have like a three touchdown game, something wild. Yeah, I mean, if you're Dallas, you're definitely worried about the run game because we saw how the Bills just tore it up. Yeah, exactly, with James Cook. And I think that Jameer Kibbs is like a better James Cook. He's younger and faster and mm -hmm. slimier. David Montgomery is just the ox of them is all. So, <laughs> I love I mean, that. That's, I don't know, I'm kind of talking myself into liking that Detroit plus six and a half, but... We'll see how it goes throughout the week. Yeah, Moving so we've on. got we've got some fan yes, mail right. actually this week, bro. So in case you guys don't know, we do post an email address in our description for oh, yeah, the everywhere. Uh, Apple Music or Apple Podcasts, Spotify, it's everywhere. YouTube. 
Yeah, exactly. So if you have any questions, comments, or suggestions, you know, if you want to send them in via email, we mm-hmm. will talk about it in the pod next week. We will week. 100% respond, even if you dog on us. Yeah. You know? We'll ex- take some criticism. Absolutely. So we actually had some fan mail this week from uh, probably our biggest fan, my, <laughs> my dad, <laughs> Love Mark. Love it. Love it. <laughs> Dude, he listens to every single episode when he's working out in the mornings. He's just No better way to there. start the morning on Wednesdays. Dude, exactly. He loves it. It gets him turned. <laughs> for his day at work. Love it. So anyways, he sent in some starts and six for starts and sits for this week. And his first start is Travis Etienne. So of course we're gonna agree with that. You literally put that as your start we're for on the, the week. same wavelength. Yeah, exactly. I love the pick. I mean it does seem like, you know, against Carolina's defense, Travis Etienne is liable to get a touchdown and yeah, he's due have for some a better yards. game because he's struggled lately. Definitely. And then his next start is Dalton Kincaid. I, I like this pick as well. You know, Bills seem like they tend to get Dalton the ball a fair amount. I think that he's definitely the better tight end over Dawson Knox. For sure. Josh Allen likes him, so I like that pick. However, the last one I think is a little bit questionable. My dad is saying to sit Tua this week. I like it. You like I it? I do. I mean, I think the Ravens are going to win, so I, I mean, do like that. Yeah, I guess that's fair, but... I think the Dolphins struggle a little bit and come I guess, back down to earth. Yeah, I guess it's a fair start because... A, a fair, like, pick, I mean, because he saw that you know, the way the Ravens absolutely shut down Brock Purdy. Yeah. So, you know, similar thought process right. there that they would do the same to Tua. However, I think that Tua will keep this a little bit closer, spread out the ball better to his receivers than Brock Purdy was doing. He's not going to be throwing picks left and right. Mm-hmm. So I think Tua will still have a good game, but evidently you and my Plus dad. Plus or minus two think, passing touchdowns for Tua. I think he'll have two Exactly. Two on the dot? Yeah. Okay, I like it. All right, moving on to the best bets. We got Clemson, plus five. This is now, I'm just going in chronological order, so that's why it'll be a mix of college football and then NFL and then college football again. Plus five against Kentucky. Just think Clemson's ended the year really strongly. They don't have as many opt-outs as some of these other teams. I know they lost a receiver, and some other players, but I like them to cover the plus five, and I think they actually might be minus five. Either way, whatever spread it is, take it. I think they're actually favored in that. Mizzou, Missouri, plus one against Ohio State. I love Missouri here. Ohio State lost Colin McCord, among other players. I think that Missouri wins outright. Then another similar SEC team, Mississippi Ole Miss. I like them plus three and a half to win outright against Penn State. So you could just take the money line, but the points are always helpful as well. Then in terms of NFL, I like Houston to cover minus three and a half against Tennessee at home. I like the Rams minus six against the Giants on the road. I like Green Bay money line. And honestly, I'm going to talk myself into a little Detroit plus six and a half as well against Dallas. And then back to college football. I believe this is New Year's Day. Iowa, Tennessee, under 36. Iowa's games have gone under for months and months and months now. And I'm going to get on board with that. Hopefully they can finish with another under. I like Tennessee to win, but probably 24 to 10 or something along those lines. Then Alabama, one and a half point underdogs. Every time Nick Saban's in the playoffs as an underdog. You're getting some tremendous value. I would like to see Michigan win, trust me, but you know I hate Alabama. But I'm just going to kind of hedge my emotions here and take Alabama in the points in the Rose Bowl. I like Texas to cover the four-point spread against Washington, win pretty handedly. I just think that Washington's a little bit softer, especially up front. I think Texas shuts the run down, even though their secondary is a little exposed. They're not great on the back end. I think it's going to be a super high-scoring, exciting game, but Texas takes the Sugar Bowl by maybe 7 to 10 points. Good stuff there. I actually I really like the Alabama plus one and a hot one and a half pick. Like you said, there is so much value to be had on a oh, team like sure. Alabama. Who, so much value. I mean, they win championships, you know, every other year. Pretty much. So. I mean, <laughs> for them to be underdogs, a lot yeah, of value there. It's kind of crazy that they are underdogs, honestly. <laughs> for sure, bro. My dad's actually going to be at this game. Uh, That's I think right. I mentioned yes, that too. I yeah, I, he's a Michigan fan, so he's definitely going to be rooting Good. for them. But I think the Alabama plus one and a half has a lot of value there. For my bets this week, I'm going to roll with Tampa Bay minus 
two and a half against New Orleans. I, I really think that Tampa should come away with this win. They've just been so hot lately. They took down Jacksonville last week. I think Jacksonville, despite how poorly they've been playing, I think they're still a better team than New Orleans. Mm-hmm. So I like Tampa Bay to cover minus two and a half. Good stuff. I'm also going to take a Mike Evans anytime TD. He seems liable to get one just about every week. It seems like... Uh, you know, Baker tends to favor him right. over Godwin, at least in the red zone. What are the odds on that? Do you know? Um, probably like plus 150 or so? Probably something like that. They were not posted yet for the touchdown score props, but yeah, yeah probably it probably aren't. is something like that. Yeah, I would assume so. I would assume he'd be the most likely Tampa Bay player to get a touchdown along Rashad with Rashad White, White. I think will be minus 110 for it. Really? Minus 110? Pro- probably. I mean, the running like back that. is normally more favored than uh, I know, any receiver. But is. I think that... I mean, I think Tampa Bay. Mike Evans has had 11 TDs this year. I don't think Rashad has had that many. Okay. I just think that it's more likely for Mike Evans to get it than Rashad. Yeah. That's the bet I like. Yeah, <laughs> good stuff there. Um, I'm also going to take Carolina plus seven. Kind of already talked about this. Jacksonville has just been playing poorly. Yeah, and I could a big see, number, honestly. Yeah, I could see Carolina, you know, keeping this game within three. And then another underdog here. I'm going to take New England plus 12 against the Bills. Now, I hope that uh, – you know, this doesn't screw me because last week I took the Bills to cover the 12 point spread and uh-huh. they did not. The Chargers covered it. So yeah. hopefully, you know, New England could, you know, cover this, but I still want the Bills to win. Oh, for sure. 12 points feels like a lot that for a lot. the team that already Divisional beat. Rivalry. Oh, yeah, yeah. Plus the Bills already lost to New England earlier this year. Yeah, absolutely. So I like uh, New England plus 12. And then finally, I'm going to introduce a new segment oh for the God. pod, dude. So excited for this. I have a nice little sports bet decision maker. I call it the <laughs> Magic Conch. And so we are going to use this bet or uh, use this decision maker. It tells you um, to so bet. It's like a little magnet on a pendulum basically and yeah. it points toward a certain text right underdog favorite over yeah. under exactly et yeah so i'm gonna do it for like the remaining like football season for whatever the first game is every week and then we're gonna track okay. the record so i'm just gonna be for this week you know we've got the jets in cleveland um so we're gonna say magic conch what's the play yeah for what's the, the play for thursday night football exactly for the jets browns game what do we think it's gonna be sweetheart Oh, oh, it can't decide. Oh, the under. That dude, hey, that's exactly that's what, what we I already said. talked I about. I like it. So, I agree, Conch. So the Conch, dude, that's such a c- cerebral bat right there. So we're going to roll <laughs> the Jets and the Browns under. What is the over under? I think under? it's under 36. Let me oh, check wow, real that quick. is a baby boy line. But Conch, your word knows better than ours. 36 and a half. 36 there and you a go. half. You get a hook. Yeah, there we go. So that's what we're rolling with this week, and we will be tracking the Magic Conch uh, bet record for the remainder of the season. Let's take a look at the public over 53%. So Mm, we're in the minority, I guess. But yeah, it's pretty close, and it hasn't moved at all yet. The Jets went from six and a half point favorites, or underdogs rather, to seven point favorites. It's the only movement that we've seen. Good stuff there. There you have it, guys. Thank you, as always, for tuning in. We will see you later on. I don't think I'll do a short. I don't know. I'm just not really that confident on anything college football with all the opt-outs. Yeah, it's so hard to. And I guess my picks you know, for college football are right there. I'm taking Alabama and Texas, and then we have a rematch of that week three matchup from early on, week two or week three matchup from early on. You have any closing thoughts? Just send us an email, man. I like getting that yeah, fan man, mail. I know it's uh, Send you me know. a smiley face. We got our comment, our first comment the other day. Yeah, I'm totally disagreeing with what we had to say, I mean, but that's okay. We totally are fine with that. Everyone has their own opinion. and uh, Yeah, no, please challenge us as much as you'd like. Yeah, for sure. And, uh, yeah, hopefully we can get some engagement from dude, the audience. You I know? would love that. I think that our last episode was one of our best performing yeah, episodes, dude, if not the best performing episode. we had 56 people listen to that episode, so I'm hoping for 56 emails next week. <laughs> <laughs> right, exactly. You all need to write in, Yeah. although I doubt all of you guys are making it to the end. But if you do, we love you. Yeah. So... We'll see you next week. Bye now.